All right, scholars, thanks for tuning in. We're going to take a look at three different cycles, the carbon cycle, phosphorus cycle, and nitrogen cycle. You're going to need to take notes on a blank sheet of unlined paper and draw them large and um, try to use different color pens. It would be ideal if you have uh, a quad color pen or four different colors, red, blue, green, black. All right, let's get started here. Carbon cycle. We're going to identify some of the major reservoirs of carbon. And one of the first that comes to mind is the atmosphere. Carbon exists in our atmosphere in the form of CO2. And we're going to draw here some land. We're also going to draw some ocean. I'm going to draw that a little bit, a little bit further over here. Here's the land. Here's the ocean. And we're going to draw that land going under the ocean. Floor of the sea. Okay, so what do we know about CO2? We know that plants like it. Plants use it to, to produce sugars, and those sugars they can use to make complex carbohydrates like cellulose, which they use to build up their structure. And, and uh, so we have another major reservoir called biomass. You can think of it as vegetation. We're going to use red to show the flux or the flow of carbon from one reservoir to another. Here we're going to show CO2 and um, we're going to label this flux photosynthesis. I'm going to abbreviate here. There's another flux though that as animals come and eat the vegetation carbon is going from the plant to them. And as they digest that food, they are then giving off CO2 in the process of respiration. As these plants die, they their components fall in the soil, they have their leaves fall off, they die and they fall over and now they are experiencing decomposition by microbial decomposers. So we can also add in here that the soil itself is a reservoir for carbon. I'm going to put in parentheses here organic matter. Generally speaking, soil that is good soil has high amounts of organic matter, decaying vegetation in it. And it is decomposers in that soil that are also doing respiration. So they're putting that CO2 back into the atmosphere as well. So we can label this process respiration by consumers and decomposers. We're going to look at numbers here. In the atmosphere, we know that there are about 815 units of CO of carbon. And a unit is about 10 to the 15 grams of carbon. So we can almost just think of these as arbitrary units. In the biomass, all the vegetation on our planet, we have about 560 units. In the soil, we have about 1,500 units. And as far as the rate of flow of the CO2, photosynthesis takes about 120 units of CO2 out of the air every year. Respiration by consumers and decomposers puts back about 60 units. And one thing that we're not looking at yet here is the fact that plants also do respiration when there's no light. And this accounts for the remaining 60 units. Respiration by plants plus 60 so look at these numbers negative 120 plus 60 plus 60 this is a carbon neutral process however with humans on the scene we have disrupted this um, this balance and um, before we go there though I need to make a another notation that there is also photosynthesis happening by algae in the ocean. So let's add in here ocean algae. 
In fact, 75% of, of all photosynthesis that occurs happens from these ocean algae. So we have photosynthesis and respiration. All right, back to the human influence. Another major reservoir for carbon is fossil fuels. These are in pockets in the earth. Coal, oil, natural gas. And we extract them. We've been doing this for a couple hundred years. We extract them so that we can burn them in our cars. Let's draw a car here. Putting out exhaust. We burn them in our power plants, in our factories. And so this is another major way that carbon gets moved through the biosphere. And we can call this here burning fossil fuels. And it puts out four units of carbon into the atmosphere every year. So far what we have here is net neutral for the photosynthesis and respiration, but then humans adding in four units every year, making this number 815 climb every year. CO2 is a greenhouse gas, so the more of it, the more um, climate change will occur. There is a negative feedback loop though, fortunately, that as the CO2 level increases, the rate at which CO2 gas dissolves into the ocean also increases. So this is another major reservoir here. The ocean contains CO2. And uh, let's draw this in here. And we can call this CO2 dissolved in ocean. And it happens through a process that we call diffusion, where the gas just um, is able to be in contact with the surface of the ocean, and the gas molecules just um, go right into it. And as they're in the ocean, they spread out throughout. Once we have CO2 in the ocean, it can react with other minerals like calcium in the in the um, in the bodies of marine animals like crustaceans and that turns it into calcium carbonate which is another name for the mineral that makes up shells so we can add in here that now we have calcium carbonate CaCO3 shells and when these marine organisms die, that calcium carbonate sinks to the bottom. It is an inorganic compound, so it is not going to be broken down by decomposers. What happens is it becomes sedimentary rock. And this is the largest reservoir for carbon on the planet. The units for this is 80 million six hundred thousand units so our hope is that as co2 rises in the atmosphere that we'll be able to see an increased um, sequestering of this carbon in the form of sedimentary rock in the ocean we need to throw in some other numbers here fossil fuels this is about four thousand units you don't actually have to memorize these but you should know that, um, that fossil fuels is a significant source of carbon that we're adding into the atmosphere. And um, the CO2 that's dissolved in the ocean, that's real big, 38,000. Not as big as the sedimentary rock, but it's in second place. This makes the ocean a big carbon sink. By a sink we mean a place where this carbon can go to and not be affecting in this case climate change 
let's take a look at focusing on human influence here. So in the bottom right here, we'll take a look at two key things of human influence. Number one, burning of fossil fuels. By burning fossil fuels, we are emitting CO2 into the atmosphere. Burning fossil fuel adds CO2 to the atmosphere. And from this we get um, global warming. Or at least we get the greenhouse effect, which um, does contribute to increasing of the planet. Other people would cite other sources for increasing global temperatures, but CO2 is definitely a factor. Now, the other one is the fact that we are cutting down trees. Deforestation. And this is a double whammy, because by deforestation, we have less photosynthesis happening, so less removal of the CO2 from the atmosphere, and in the process of doing deforestation, we're, we're not always just cutting down trees. We usually think of it that way, but lots of deforestation occurs in parts of the world where you are just trying to clear um, a forest area so that you have soil to grow, um, to grow food on. And you usually are doing a burning process there, slash and burn. So not only are you getting rid of your trees, but you are burning forests which, just like burning fossil fuels, puts CO2 into the atmosphere, releases CO2. Okay, so we looked at the carbon cycle. Atmosphere is a big source, a uh, big re um, reservoir. Carbon can go into biomass through photosynthesis. It gets re-released back into the atmosphere through respiration by consumers and decomposers. We are releasing more CO2 into the atmosphere by the burning of fossil fuels that we extract from the ground. But CO2 can also dissolve into the ocean. And when it does, it can become calcium carbonate, which is um, what its shells are made of. It's also called limestone. And when the animals die, it can form sedimentary rock at the bottom of the ocean. Even without this process happening, just the fact that CO2 dissolves into the ocean means that the ocean itself can be a good sink for, um, for excess CO2 accumulating in our atmosphere. Okay, next we're going to take a look at the phosphorus cycle.